Good morning and welcome to the Lilly Lebanon Manufacturing Site. My name is Jen Massey and on behalf of the Lilly Lebanon team, I'd like to thank you for joining us this morning to mark the start of construction on our manufacturing facilities here in Lebanon. A special welcome to our speakers, Lilly Chair and CEO Dave Ricks, Governor Holcomb, Senator Young, Secretary Chambers, Mayor Gentry, Ivy Tech President Dr. Elsperman, and to all of our other distinguished guests, including Indiana House Speaker Houston. We thank you for your participation in this historic event. I'd also like to recognize our Lilly Executive Committee, our senior manufacturing and quality leadership, along with our project and construction teammates who have made today a reality. With your work and support, we'll transform this area that we're on and standing in right now into an advanced manufacturing camp campus, safely producing high quality medicines for patients around the world. Our manufacturing site here will increase Lilly's manufacturing capacity for active pharmaceutical ingredients and will provide new capability for genetic medicines. Our operations will be truly innovative, high tech, state of the art, and we are so excited to be doing that in our Indiana home. With that, I'd now like to welcome our Lilly Chair and CEO, Dave Ricks, to the podium. Okay, thank you, Jen, and to whoever arranged the tent, thank you. <laughs> Good thinking. Uh, thanks all for coming today, and I also want to welcome Governor Holcomb, uh, Senator Todd Young, Secretary Chambers, and Mayor Gentry, as well as Sue Elsperman from Ivy Tech as our honored guest today, um, and also Todd Houston, uh, Speaker of the House, uh, for joining us today. Um, we want to extend all of you uh, a warm welcome to this historic, groundbreaking ceremony we have today. Uh, before I get to my remarks, I also just want to pause and thank uh, Brad Chambers uh, for his leadership and commitment to make the vision of this site and the whole Leap Park um, come to life. Without his energy and expertise, that would not have happened. So thanks, Brad. Awesome uh, job. Thank you. And thank you to many others across uh, the government. We're grateful for the partnership we have with our federal, state, and local officials. Uh, who helped us foster uh, what will be the next great hub of global innovation for Lilly and right here in Indiana. Uh, this is truly an exciting day for Lilly, but also for our state. In a few weeks, we'll start our 147th year as a company. And our purpose uh, to make medicine for mankind's biggest health challenges has never been more relevant, and our impact as a company has never been more clear. The number of people who rely on Lilly Medicines to treat diabetes, cancer, autoimmune diseases, and other serious illnesses is growing each year. We hope to reach 58 million people in 2023 with our medicines, an increase of 20 million in just the last few years. And millions more can be reached in the decade ahead. Our research labs are producing innovative medicines at a historical rate. We've launched 19 new medicines since 2014 and expect to launch several new treatments this year alone. To support this growing pipeline and the launches of our new medicines, we continue to expand our global manufacturing footprint to ensure safe and reliable supply of those medicines for the people around the world who need them. In fact, people in nearly every corner of the earth rely on the medicines we make for hope and for healing. But even with a global mission, we've always had a special relationship with our home state and the Indiana communities where we live and we work. And last year, we announced plans to build two new state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities right here on this land in Boone County. That announcement was an exciting number, $2.1 billion associated with 500 permanent jobs. Today, I'm pleased to announce that we're making additional investments. We're expanding that scope by 1.6 billion additional dollars here at this site, creating an additional 200 permanent jobs in high skill areas like production, operations, lab support, and engineering. So that now brings the site commitment to $3.7 billion 
This is the largest manufacturing investment at a single location in Lilly's 147 year history. <laughs> Truly exciting. Our continued commitment to Indiana underscores a shared objective to make our state even better for residents, for communities, and for businesses. And investing billions in our home state and creating hundreds of science and technology jobs here in Indiana will forward that objective. Since 2020, the company has invested $6.4 billion in US manufacturing sites, like this one here today, further strengthening the supply chains right here in our country and our ability to make life-changing medicines here in the United States. Like the medicine we make in Indianapolis down the road, the products we make here in Boone County will someday be shipped around the world, improving and sustaining uh, and saving the lives of millions of people who need new and better treatments to manage serious diseases. The illness, illnesses we treat today, like diabetes and cancer, and the challenges we hope to conquer ahead, like Alzheimer's disease and obesity. Making medicine requires the use of resources including energy, water, and raw materials. And at all our manufacturing sites, we're committed to reducing our environmental footprint across the supply chain, integrating advanced energy management technologies into the manufacturing, using high efficiency equipment, creating on-site solar energy, electric vehicle infrastructure, and improving the electrification of the whole site to minimize fossil fuel-based energy sources. That's good for the community here in Boone County, it's good for our planet, and it's good for Lilly's competitiveness. Lilly has a long heritage of community engagement everywhere we go. So uh, Mayor Gentry, I hope uh, you'll enjoy your new neighbor here up the road uh, in Eli Lilly. Th this started with our founder, uh, Colonel Eli Lilly, and the foundation his family created, and it continues through the generations. One of the hallmarks of our impact on communities is partnerships with local colleges that help increase the quality of education and help build a lasting and diverse high-skilled talent pipeline. Last year, we expanded our long-standing partnership with Purdue University up the road. And today, I'm pleased to make another announcement, which is a $15 million scholarship collaboration with Ivy Tech, creating a new scholarship opportunity for students pursuing two-year degrees or certificates in manufacturing, hopefully biomanufacturing, and related fields. In particular, this program will enhance opportunities for first-generation college students in Indiana and others who have overcome social and economic challenges uh, to get to a, a great job, like one maybe here in, in Boone County. More than a quarter of our global workforce calls Indiana home, whether they've grown up here or come from somewhere else around the world. Our commitment to the state highlights our belief that Indiana will remain an attractive location for new businesses and for our new employees. And we believe the LEAP District can be a thriving nexus of global innovation, bringing together the knowledge and innovation of today with the revolutionary ideas of tomorrow to help Indiana lead in the modern economy. But even with significant investments that leading companies like Lilly are making, that vision won't be realized without much more intentional action to cultivate a biopharma research and manufacturing hub here in Indiana. But that vision is possible. And I know when us Hoosiers come together with big ideas, we can tackle big challenges. As I've said uh, over the last year or so, policymakers can encourage further investment by focusing on issues that make this an even more vibrant and welcoming state to attract talent and drive growth and seizing the advantages Indiana offers businesses in the innovation economy. There's more we can do to maximize our potential, but I would like to acknowledge Speaker Houston, since he's here, for his leadership on these issues, as well as the governor during this last term. He and Pro Tem Bray offered a robust legislative agenda during this year's General Assembly, which includes several bills to address the high cost of health care to patients and to businesses, as well as much needed funding to improve public health in our state. Just as I said earlier with our Ivy Tech partnership, we share Speaker Houston and the General Assembly's commitment to have a more relevant and responsive education system that meets today's workforce needs. More than a century ago, Colonel Eli Lilly passed the business to his son, 
and gave him one imperative. Take what you find here and make it better and better. We're excited for the opportunity to take this empty canvas and transform it into a world-class, high-tech manufacturing complex that makes medicines to help solve some of the toughest challenges in healthcare. And we're looking forward to doing our part to grow Indiana's innovation economy and deliver a better future for all Hoosiers. We can't wait to get started. Thanks again for being with us today. Good morning. Good morning. Let me just say at the outset, I couldn't sleep last night. And Speaker Houston and, and I usually have a long list for not being able to sleep at night. Um, but last night there was only this on the horizon. Today is, as Dave just said, we throw these words like unprecedented and historic around loosely sometimes. But today meets that moment and that very definition. This is truly an historic occasion. I would dare say it is a monumental day, not just for Lebanon and Boone County, not even just for the state of Indiana. This is a monumental and proud day for everyone that had a hand in getting us to this very moment for the world. I think about what a transformation will occur for those folks who are working here from construction through production. The opportunities, the new opportunities that they will have. I think about the folks who will be in receipt of what is manufactured here and how that will transform their lives for, as Colonel Lilly probably strongly suggested, transform for the better. It's impossible to adequately articulate the total positive ripple effect that this ground will have on the world. When you think about all the good that planting another Lilly corporate flag in the state of Indiana will have globally, and so I Salute Dave Ricks on his stewardship, on his steering, on his focused courage to paint on this new canvas in this new day with all the challenges that are thrown to this industry's way for his insistence on maintaining that leadership position in terms of discovery and the impact that those discoveries will have in this most globally competitive time. In addition to Dave's leadership, there's also, I can think of a handful of other folks who have contributed to get us to this very day, and there's much credit to go around. Obviously, one of the first boxes that has to be checked, and sometimes it's flown right over because it's, it's just assumed in the state of Indiana, is our low cost of doing business. That is a prerequisite, but it is far from all that you need. But I will commend Speaker Houston and Senator Buchanan and legislative members for over these recent years again insisting that we maintain this leadership position so that we're always in the mix. Speaker Houston and I talk about this second war of the states, the economic development war that we have that's ongoing every day, every minute of every day, and that competition. And so having folks, I see Kevin Brenniger from the State Chamber and Brian Burton from the manufacturers, it's by no coincidence that we find ourselves ranked number one in terms of the best place to start a business in America, according to Forbes, or number one in terms of per capita 
in, uh, for manufacturing in the United States of America. I think about our talent pipelines and the nimble leadership that President Sue Elsperman has exhibited from day one and grown this partnership with our state and the corporate community. Truly, Ivy Tech is now more than ever and more than much of the competition in the country, market aligned and market driven. That is key to getting to a day like today. I think about what I like to call our unfair competitive advantage, that being Purdue University and the visionary leadership of President Meng Chang. His insistence, to use the word again, to lean forward, to go places, new frontiers, in terms of ag bioscience, life sciences, advanced manufacturing, you name it, Purdue is right there and such a huge part of our state's success and future. That research component that will be instrumental in discovering new frontiers is because of that partnership with Purdue. I think about our desire to always improve on our infrastructure, how we connect with one another and to markets, as Dave suggested, across the globe. I think about all the agencies that never get to bask in the glory of a day like today, IDEM and NDOT, those folks that are working around the clock but are not here because they're out preparing this field of dreams for what's to come. And lastly, as Dave more than alluded to, it's just the team spirit that's exhibited on a day like today and every day that leads up to it. All the stakeholders that got around the table that were working in unison harmoniously to get to a place like this, state, local, and federal. Think about, I'm gonna start calling him America's mayor, Gentry, from the very early outset, you talk about courage, making sure that home base was covered and included. I think about the county commissioners and the county council, critically important to making sure this was a team effort. I think about Senator Young for having such a deep understanding of how Indiana's strengths are part of America's strengths. Your actions contribute to our economic and our national security, Senator Young, and results matter. And I can't express how grateful I am that you are omnipresent and always offering what to do next that's gonna really make a difference. And lastly, to Secretary Chambers and for your sleepless team at the IEDC. I would say they're nocturnal, but I don't think they sleep during the day either. I think you should have carpe diem printed on your business card because if ever a time to seize the day or to seize the opportunity in the, this transitional period that we're living in for various reasons, technology included, you have, as Dave said, this rare organized sense of intensity and urgency combined, and it is making a huge difference. It is exactly what the state of Indiana ordered for this moment. Hoosiers will benefit greatly from this site, from the development of this site, and it doesn't happen, as Dave said, without you. You should take a bow or at least a breath before you move on to the next site. Uh, I think about Senator Buchanan and I were just Friday um, outside of Crawfordsville celebrating a $400 million expansion. I think about a couple weeks before that celebrating a $1.5 billion investment in Terre Haute. I think about just a few days after that celebrating Avonic up in Lafayette. The hits just keep on coming. 
And these are the jobs, the careers of the future that make a difference for not only our state, but for our country. And most importantly, to the entire Eli Lilly team, for all those folks working behind the scenes, doing all the due diligence that went into selecting ultimately this site against all the competition. We obviously think they chose wisely, you chose wisely. We appreciate that. We know there were other, there was fierce competition, but this giant step will, I believe, years from now, reflect what a wise decision this was and this era of Lilly is. Congratulations to Eli Lilly and congratulations to Lebanon and to Boone County and to every Hoosier that's going to call this home. Congrats. Thank you, Governor. I'm motivated. I hear a lot of speeches, as, as you might expect, uh, but to be here and, and celebrate this generational investment at this field of dreams is, is really exciting to me. I think we're getting just a glimpse into Indiana's high-tech future. And it is more than fitting that Eli Lilly and company is leading the way. They've been leading the way for 150 years. The mission, of course, is, is a simple one, to create medicines for the benefit of mankind, and they've done it consistently. But along the way, they've also figured out how to handsomely benefit the people of Indiana. And I, for one, am grateful for that. We are standing on the brink of an exciting, new frontier, one that will open the doors to new and exciting job opportunities and opportunities to train so that everyone can meaningfully participate in this dynamic global economy right here in the state of Indiana. Semiconductor opportunities abound across the country. This has been a, an area of federal attention recently, and, and uh, I dare say that it's, it's sort of been the sizzle that gets everyone talking. But the stake could very well be in other frontier technologies, like those, those very technologies that will drive development uh, of the sorts of life-saving and life-extending drugs that will be made at this biomanufacturing facility one day. This facility is no accident. The people up here on the stage, of course, played a very important role. So many of you uh, within this squeaky tent played an important role, <laughs> and, 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 and many, many others I know. But our, between our state's manufacturing heritage and the life sciences expertise that uh, we've, we've developed over the years, we have a great recipe for projects like this very project. Governor Holcomb and his team, Speaker Houston and Senator Bray, they put Indiana in a position to win these jobs, and I commend them for their leadership. Our state leaders will be working with companies like Lilly and our educational institutions like Ivy Tech to prepare the next generation of, of Hoosiers to fill these good paying and important jobs. It's going to take an all hands on deck approach for us to win the race for these jobs of tomorrow. But if today's groundbreaking isn't proof that we can, I don't know what is. Now I'd like to introduce my friend, Indiana Secretary of Commerce, Brad Chambers. Brad. Good morning. OK, um, Dave, Governor, thank you um, for your humbling words. But you are correct. It, uh, there is no I in team, and this is indeed a team effort that got us here to today. Governor, you also referenced that um, your conversations with uh, Speaker Houston, that economic development is like a war. 
And if you don't mind, I mean, I may, do, if I could just borrow the word general instead of secretary for a couple days, <laughs> because my job feels like I am a war. You're right. Well, my, t my comments on, on occasions like this can be typically brief, but this occasion merits a bit more reflection. So uh, in anticipation of the day, I was pondering the origins of how this day came to pass. And I will just start by saying, it's so very interesting how the world works sometimes, especially if we're listening and, and being attentive. I'm going to take you back to the summer of 2020, a global pandemic as the backdrop. The world was a bit slower at the time. Fortunately, the summer weather allowed occasional opportunities for friends to gather outdoors, and inevitably, topics turned from how family and business was managing through that difficult period to the time-honored practice of lamenting about world affairs, including the unimaginable offshoring of our country's production of PPE or the implications of a now-exposed supply chain. This, the conversations over the summer and fall continued to touch on topics like the benefits of clustering, the need to reshore critical industries, especially in a few areas like life sciences and semiconductors. And we talked about China's decades-long dominance in the creation of large megaparks. Riveting stuff, I know. <laughs> Fast forward to the spring of 2021 when the tall gentleman with cowboy boots behind me called and asked if I would step away from the business I had started almost 40 years ago to lead the growth of Indiana's economy as your Secretary of Commerce. I think you may be able to see the thread that ties this story together, a story that leads us to today's celebration. A series of fortuitous coincidences, including a renewed national focus on American manufacturing in important industries, a locally-based pharmaceutical giant growing rapidly with a dynamic CEO, a real estate entrepreneur unexpectedly turned civil servant with a why not Indiana attitude, a pro-growth and competitive governor, a great state for doing business, a willing legislature, incredible universities, an open-minded community. As I said, it's so very interesting how the world works sometimes. So why not Indiana? If China can do it, why not the United States and specifically Indiana? Why can't we compete and win against China or North Carolina or Texas, for that matter? The answer is we can and we are. A historic $26.8 billion of newly committed capital investment in Indiana in just the last five quarters, far surpassing any previous records. Investments in future-focused industries offering high-wage careers for Hoosiers. This important investment by this important global leader in pharmaceutical innovation represents $3.7 billion of that unprecedented result. I want to thank the Lebanon community for its courage, its belief in the future. Thank you to Mayor Gentry, the Plan Commission, and Council for their leadership. The LEAP project, while incredibly aspirational, can also be equally intimidating in its potential scale and impact. I understand those in the community that were or even continue to be concerned. Change is uncomfortable. But on the other side of change and discomfort is opportunity. Opportunity for the city, region, and state opportunity for Hoosiers of today, and importantly, Hoosiers of tomorrow. LEAP is envisioned to be a best-in-class district for research, manufacturing, for future-focused and forward-looking industries. It's envisioned to be a highly sustainable community that respects its agricultural heritage and a vibrant place where people can live, work, play, learn, and prosper. So Lebanon, thank you, and congratulations at the same time. The future is bright here in Boone County, in Lebanon, Indiana. Dave, thank you for your views on important topics like the need for enhanced industrial com competitiveness in the United States. 
Thank you to you, your team, and board of directors for Lilly's important investment in our state and for anchoring the LEAP Innovation District. LEAP is an investment in Indiana, an investment that provides a Hoosier home for reshoring of industries with national security clustering, with, excuse me, national security benefits and economic security implications, a best-in-class location for industry clustering and industry growth, which will power this region and the state's economy for generations to come. Indiana is blessed that in 1876, Colonel Lilly chose Indiana to start his entrepreneurial journey. Indiana is thankful to have a tradition of exceptional leaders at the helm. John Lecklider before you and now your inspired navigation of this storied company. Thank you. Governor, Speaker Houston, thank you for your intuitive understanding of the investment opportunity I presented in the fall of 2021 a vision and belief that Indiana could be a global leader in the competition for cutting edge industries if we made the right investments in our future. Fortune indeed favors the bold, and LEAP is a bold investment in Indiana's future. Today's announcement, Lilly at LEAP Lebanon, is evidence of that for sure. Senator Young, keep doing what you're doing. The CHIPS Act is the right thing for America and certainly Indiana. Indiana is as proud of your work and our early momentum in microelectronics as we are our long history in life sciences and its ever-increasing economic impact. And lastly, to the entire IEDC team, but especially Dave Rosenberg, Kurt Fulbeck, Mark Woski, and, and Phil Fowler, great job. And to our many partners, partners including Ivy Tech, Sue, thank you. Uh, Pure, there's uh, Chris and Drew, Structure Point, MKSK, Ratio, and Terra, to our utility partners, Lebanon Utilities, AES, Duke, Wabash Valley, Citizens of Indiana American, and the numerous others who are helping to shepherd this ambitious vision. More to do, of course, but thank you for joining us to shoot higher and run faster. And obviously, I've got to thank Mike Smith at NDOT and Brian Ruck, uh, Rockensus, both commissioners for their team and their partnership and the other Indiana agencies and team members that have uh, made this great day. So thank you again for joining arms with us to shoot higher and run faster for the future of Indiana. Thank you. Well, I'm the mayor, so I guess I'll take uh, credit for the weather, so apologies. Um, after eight years, I still can't find those dang weather controls, so sorry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, fellow citizens of Lebanon, it is truly a privilege to be here today to celebrate a truly historic occasion, the groundbreaking ceremony for Eli Lilly and Company's $3.7 billion investment in our community. This is a momentous day for the state of Indiana and the city of Lebanon, and I'm truly humbled and honored to be your mayor as we take this important step forward together. I want to begin by thanking Governor Holcomb and Secretary of Commerce Brad Chambers for their leadership and commitment to economic growth and development in Indiana. Without their tireless efforts, this project would not be possible. I also have to thank the team at the IADC, our friends in the Boone County Government, the Lebanon City Council, our city planning staff, and all citizen members of our city planning and zoning boards. We would not be here today without your hard work, commitment, and service to our community. I'd also like to express my deepest gratitude to Lilly CEO Dave Ricks and his entire team at Eli Lilly and Company for their trust and belief in our community for their record-breaking investment in our future together. As we break ground of this new facility, we are reminded of the pioneering spirit that has defined our community for generations. Our forefathers came to this land with little more than determination and grit. They didn't find these well-organized farm fields with you know, drainage ditches everywhere to make sure the water runs off. They found a land covered by trees and swamps. They had to carve a future for themselves out of that wilderness. With hard work and perseverance, they built the foundation of a community that has endured for nearly two centuries. Today, we carry on that tradition. We are carving a new future for Lebanon, a future that is built on innovation, technology, and progress and we're doing it with the same spirit of determination and grit that has always defined us. 
But this investment from Lilly is more than about progress and growth. It's about stewardship and responsibility. Eli Lilly has, been a long -standing, has had a long-standing commitment to environmental sustainability, and they've implemented a number of initiatives to reduce their environmental impact and promote sustainability. They've shown that it's po possible to be both profitable and environmentally responsible, and we are proud to partner with them in this effort. Of course, the governor and secretary would be quick to remind me that this investment about Lilly is also about the jobs and the economic growth. The $3.7 billion investment in this facility will create thousands of new jobs for our community, both in the short term, during the construction phase, and in the long term of this facility as it becomes operational. This investment will bring new opportunities and new prosperity to our community, and will help us strengthen our local economy for generations to come. But perhaps most importantly, this investment from Lilly is about people. It's about the people who will work here, the people who will benefit from the medicines that are produced here, and the people that will be touched by the ripple effects of this investment all throughout our community. Lilly is a company that is committed to helping people. They're a company that is dedicated to improving the lives of the people around the world, and we are proud to have them call Lebanon, Indiana home. I'll repeat what CEO Rick said. In the words of Colonel Eli Lilly, take what you find here make it, and make it better and better. In conclusion, I just want to say that today is a day that we will always remember. It is a day that we came together to celebrate progress, growth, and innovation. It is a day inspired by our pioneering spirit and, reaff and a reaffirming of our commitment to a future that is built on determination, grit, and progress. So let us break ground today with a sense of pride, a sense of optimism, a sense of responsibility, but also let us work together to build a brighter future for Lebanon and all of Indiana. So on behalf of the citizens of Lebanon, Eli Lilly and Company, welcome to Lebanon, Indiana, and welcome home. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gentry, or as you've been nicknamed now, America's Mayor. <laughs> I'm Sue Alsperman, President of Ivy Tech Community College. Today is truly an exciting day for our communities and our state, as Ivy Tech is excited to expand on the collaboration with Eli Lilly and company, announcing the Lilly Scholars at Ivy Tech program. This $15 million investment over five years by Eli Lilly will create opportunities for first-generation and socioeconomically challenged students, high school and adults from central Indiana to pursue high-wage, high-demand careers in quality assurance and pharmaceutical manufacturing, two sectors that power Indiana's economic growth, vitality, and prosperity. Lilly Scholars will also have access to best-in-class facilities like a new Eli Lilly Smart Manufacturing Lab while pursuing their certifications and degrees that will become the foundation for their success as future lab and automation technicians, operators, and many more positions. The Eli Lilly Manufacturing Lab will allow Ivy Tech's Indianapolis campus to offer the nation's first Industry 4.0 uh, associate degree, not only for those Lilly scholars at Ivy Tech, but also to other students who will be the fuel of Indiana's manufacturing economy with critical talent pipelines that will be skilled in the internet of things and the fully connected automation that we see in our manufacturing plants today. It's cold in here. And because of this generous collaboration, more Hoosiers will gain world-class education and training backed by experiential learning that will prepare them, not just for graduation day, but for every day after. Ivy Tech is proud to work alongside one of the nation's premier employers, Eli Lilly and Company, which sees the potential an Ivy Tech credential has to generate positive impact within their company, both across Indiana, and around the world. As we commence this next level of work together, I wanna to thank Dave Ricks and Eli Lilly, the entire team, Ed and many others, for your trust and partnership in us. And a special thanks to Governor Holcomb and the state of Indiana, to Brad Chambers and the amazing IEDC, Senator Todd Young for the incredible work you're doing, and uh, Speaker of the House, Todd Houston, thank you. Uh, we appreciate that you continue to put faith in us 
and you fully leverage Ivy Techs as Indiana's workforce engine. Thank you.